From the moment I was born, I cried for a month. And for the next 18 years, my pain remained in sight. Zebra Crossing came about, you know, when I was thinking about the film, it actually came to me very early that, you know, life is this journey and it's, it's this road you take. And if your life's on one side, you can be on one side or the other, really. Um, and it's not that easy to get across. And, and the Zebra Crossing was almost this, you know, a place that you could get across, a smooth way across, and a transition into a different life. And that's kind of what most of us are looking for, I think. I think when you, know, when you get to 18 years of age and you become a man, and there's a lot of pressure on that, and that's where our character Justin was. <laughs> Oh, you ain't got the nuts. We didn't hold back because we were in control of everything from the money, from the, the whole production the way through. There was no one trying to work it for a market. We just worked the film for what the story was about, which is essentially about the characters um, in central London and you know the loneliness of living there, being young, teenage angst, and at not one point did we sort of veer from what the target of the film was about. Yeah. And, you know, we wanted it. There's bits of the film we wanted it to be fun. You know. There's adrenaline when you're young, you get caught up in the moment and we wanted to get that through. And I think maybe sometimes if you had you know, people investing lots of money into your film, they would want to water these things down. I mean, a lot of the characters are based on real people that I've met through my life. Um, obviously there's bits on, that you put inside as a filmmaker, <laughs> but a lot, a lot of the stories and the characters are real in there. Um, I lived on an, on the Indian estate for 10 years, first 10 years of my life, and then I lived in North West London, um, went to school with some pretty wild characters, so I guess my research was life and doing that. I mean, there is a couple, you know, the scene we've just been talking about here with the two guys getting beaten up at the start, that was from something I read in the paper, that an incident that happened over near the, I think it was an embankment, um, and there was actually a young girl, girl involved of like 15 years of age and mm. ended up stamping on a guy and killing him. Yeah. Just because one of them threw a comment at him um, as he was sat with his boyfriend on a seat and it affected me. It made me feel mm. sick and I just... It was... <coughs> we took a risk there really having our main characters be portrayed this way at the start of the film. Yeah. But I, I think if, we, if you're trying to make it real, this, I felt this is what characters like this would do, you know? Mm. <laughs> Stop Stop We've all got a facade of being kind of tough guys, especially people that age, and showing a vulnerability is, is something that people don't like to show. But I think that's what we really wanted to do with the film. Is I think that was the, like, the main thing that I definitely wanted to get across, is to show that, you know, especially in that first scene where y you can really show that he's a, not a nice character, but you want to show another side to him and show that he is vulnerable and, you know, deep down there's, there's a good soul there. It always interested me that we, we live, especially in the centre of London, these big council blocks, and there's thousands upon thousands of people squashed in like sardines, yet we are all lonely within that. No one like, knows yeah. anyone's name. Yeah, exactly. People just walk by. And it was true when we were filming, because we were filming yeah. all the real locations. <clears throat> people just, you know, no one really seemed to know each other. It was, it was That's London strange. in a nutshell. Exactly. Really. <laughs> It'd be easy to say, yeah, it's hard to get into that kind of mind, but no, not really. I've, I've seen that kind of thing before. I went to school with kids like that, grew up with kids like that. <clears throat> I actually based that scene on someone that I used to know, um, that intense kind of not letting anyone else speak and that intense kind of, you know, just bullying, real kind of it horrible, anger, wasn't it? Which real angry some bullying. sort of results in fear. But I it's, you know, like, growing up in kind of North London, you, you, you see things, you do things and... I was luckily, well, luckily, I was able to base that on something and some things I'd seen before. Oh, come on, man, it's a fire, it's all I need to get myself up and running. Yeah, to a bag of smack. No, 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 oh, come on, man, I'm good for it, you know me. Yeah, I know you, Danny. You're a dirty fucking druggie. Oh! It's not black and white, I think your DVD's broke. Really? <laughs> no, no, it's black and white, it's black and white. <laughs> <laughs> it's 3D colour, no. Uh... Uh, no, I mean, the story is a flashback. So that's firstly, it's, uh, you know, he's lying on the beach at the beginning and, and it's that moment, you know, at the end of it all, when, when you just, when you actually take time out and you just, it's a flashback and he's looking back at the last three months of his life. 
Um, also, with, with the colour, I find nowadays, you've, with advertising and the media, it's, you know, the colour's so vibrant and it's graded and it's all in your face. Um, mm. And in a way, it was just <clears> nice <throat> to strip all the colour back and just leave the raw emotion that was left and the palette of, of black and white. And I thought that, you know, there's racism in the film um, and that was very much the black and the white, the mix. Um, sort of the loneliness, wasn't it? The polar mm. opposites um, interacting. So they worked with the black and white. And we went for a very um, grainy, raw look to the film. Because I felt that, you know, that... that uh, That's what it was. ...projected what their lives were like, yeah. I don't know why you've got to keep doing it the hard way. Generally, when you try and do any <clears throat> part, you try and bring a bit of yourself into it. Uh, try and get that truth and honesty into the part. You know, there's obviously there's, there's things that he does and has been through that I've never, and touch wood, will never go through. But you try and take anything that you have and, you know, make that work within it.